Welcome back, everybody, to the second installment of our Spring Bear 10-Minute Talk special with the Ryan Lampers. We're going to talk a little bit about a bear meat right now, and I feel like the culinary aspect of, of, of wild game in general, but particularly bear meat, is, is drawing people into the woods to uh, pursue these amazing, amazing animals. I don't know about you, Ryan, but for years when I was growing up, like, oh, bear, oh, bear meat, that's greasy. You don't even want to eat that. It's like, yeah, shoot one in your life, get a rug and, you know, make some sausage and, you know, be on your way, right? Uh, not necessarily true. Not at all. No, could they, those old timers were wrong. Just wrong, Mark. I got the same speech when I was growing up from my dad was you shoot them and you take the rug, but the meat is meh, you know, it's not great. So greasy and gross is what I always heard. I don't know where that came from because they couldn't have been more wrong. Um, <laughs> Weird. I remember when I started taking bears, uh, it was probably and, some and guy that loved hunting bears. Like, and he's like, man, Ooh. I got, I got a, some, these things are fantastic. I got a, that old bastard. I can't let people know. <laughs> he, he had the world fooled in my, in my group of friends for sure, because, uh, everybody had that same conclusion, like bears, not, not edible. Um, but who knows? I mean, I think, I think there's there's probably reasons why uh, people have felt that way. I think maybe not taking care of them. Uh, you know, bear meat is really fatty. And if, if you know much about fat, it goes rancid quicker than a, like, say, a lean game meat, like a venison. Hmm. You know, deer and elk is really lean. You can keep that tucked away in your freezer for a pretty long time without anything turning on you if you have it trimmed up nice. But bear meat will turn on you. I was kind of recommend to people to try to, you know, get that knocked out of your freezer. If it's, if that's how you've stored it is like typical, how we would do our deer and elk vacuum packed, put it in a freezer. Um, you want to try to get that out of your freezer and into your belly, um, within, you know, four or five, six months because the, just the fat of it will turn and you will have an off flavor to it, but fresh bear meat, canned bear meat, um, it's, it's really, really, really hard to beat. It's just got a fantastic flavor to it. So, um, we love it. My family loves it. I don't know anybody who really doesn't like it except for the old curmudgeons that back in the day, they just got it in their head that bear meat isn't very good. But, uh, again, it's our favorite meat. And unfortunately bears don't <clears throat> provide a ton of it. I think we average maybe, you know, 50, 60, 70 pounds per bear. So you're not, you're not getting as much as a lot of people think, but, uh, hmm. but it's delicious. Talking about, you know, I guess we're going to, we're talking about spring bear specifically right now, but there's a little bit of a contrast in fat content of a spring bear versus a fall bear. But is, is that fat content that at least I'm thinking about like more on essentially the outside of the meat, kind of between the hide and that meat layer to where, the time frame where you'd want to consume that meat is actually the same for a spring or fall bear? That's a good question. I, you know, bear is going to be greasy, whether it's a spring, it's got fat within the meat, definitely, um, you know, spring to fall, but you will have a much thicker, much thicker layer on the outside of that meat between hide and meat, uh, come fall season. Obviously they've, they've had all summer and through the fall to carb load on, whatever they're chewing up uh, a lot of berries um i used to fall bear hunt a ton just for the fact that i would get those really fat just roly-poly fall bears and you know if you want to utilize that fat and render it down and use it throughout the year fall bears is what you want to target you don't tend to get as much on a spring bear um i've had some spring bears that come out of the den and it's surprising how much fat is still on them mm -hmm. you just think they'd be skinny as a rail. And then I get one that, uh, and say maybe it's 50, 50 and it's just got no fat. Like it's utilized mm -hmm. all its reserves hmm. over, over the winter. So it's, it's, it's a mix. You never know what you're going to get. If you, if you get uh, a spring bear that does have some of that, those fat reserves left, um, can you still render that fat? Is that still going to be good oh, fat yeah. to render? Absolutely. Yeah. Okay. And I, and I plan on doing that this year. Every, uh, every spring, like one of the best parts about bear hunting is when you get a bear down, 
Um, now hopefully in your travels, like when you're hiking around and cruising through burns and covering country, you'll have picked up maybe some morels. Morels are like always one of those things that you're looking for when you're bear hunting. It's generally the same time frame. And if you can snap a few of those morels, toss them in your bag, have those at the ready for when you do put down a bear, man, it's one of the best mountain meals you'll ever have. Mm. And, um, I would say that's probably my favorite mountain meal. And I simply to, to fix that up, I mean, morels are easy to cook up, but you take some of that fat, you render it down and say a jet boil style cooker, even a pan, whatever you have. Um, I run a minimo jet boil. It's, <clears throat> it's got a real low, or it's got a toggle on it that gets that temperature really low, like a hot, it goes from hot blue flame to down to a, an orange light flame. Hmm. And you use that low, low heat to render that fat down. And what I, I just like to cut little nuggets out of that bear meat and drop it in deep fry it, I guess. And same thing with those morels. And, uh, yeah, that's a meal that you're not soon going to forget for sure. It sounds good to me. Oh man. Yeah. One of the problems with podcasting in the morning though, Mark, <laughs> is that I usually eat a light breakfast and wait till lunch to, to load up and lunch might come early today. Uh, so Ryan, I, when people talk about eating bear meat, I think we'd be remiss to not bring up the fact that there there is, you know, some people get worried about, sure. oh, what's the, like, trichinosis. trichinosis. Yeah, yeah. Thank trichinosis. You. I don't know why I forgot the name there for a second. But uh, what's the story on that? I mean, obviously, tons of people eat bear meat, so it's not like you're guaranteed to get it, but it is a possibility, right? So how does that work? Yeah, the only way you're going to get trichinosis is if you undercook your bear meat. Okay. And here's the magic in bear meat guys is it almost feels like you can't overcook your bear meat. Uh, it's one of those meats okay. where like, if you were to, if you were just to cook thoroughly, you know, a nice venison steak, you're going to get this tough piece of boot leather. It's so lean. <clears throat> it's just going to be really tough. Do that with a piece of bear meat. And it's got just this fattiness to it <clears throat> kind of woven amongst the meat. And it's almost hard to overcook it. It's still going to okay. have really rich flavor to it. So you want to you want to make sure that you cook your bear meat. So where there's no pink, um, you know, if you're doing it at home, use a thermometer, get that temp up to 160, even 165, maybe hold that for a couple minutes, and just so that you know you've cooked the trick out of it. Um, and that's that's all you need to worry about. You know, we we do bear nuggets on the mountain just over an open fire all the time. And when you're doing it like that, you're just cutting thin strips you know, putting it on a stick and cooking it over the fire and just making sure that there's no pink to it. Mm -hmm. Um, yeah. And I think people would be surprised that, uh, you know, even what looks to be like an overcooked char broiled nugget, uh, wouldn't have any, you know, redeeming qualities to it because it's just charred. It's still a really, really good piece of meat. And that just works with bear. And it's funny how that works because it's that one piece of meat that you have to almost overcook but it just sure. has a great flavor to it. Yeah, That's good to know. That definitely is like a, a fortunate, you know, whatever situation or correlation. Yeah. Cause there. if you had to like, yeah, if you had to get it just right where it's like, well, don't overcook it. It's going to be gross. Don't undercook it. Cause then you're going to get trichinosis. Right. Then it's like, I mean, I know beef steaks been cooking them for how long and it still can't always get it just right. I mean, unless yeah. Yeah. you could probably, uh, does sous vide get it hot enough to like, if, I suppose you could set it to one, 60 or yeah. 165 and just let her let her rip yeah if yeah really just, just like get it. comfortable with cooking you know getting used to a thermometer i know like triggers you know i use the trigger a lot and just oh, having yeah. that having that thermometer be able to jack in there and and get that temp up to 160 and you know you're solid at that point mm -hmm. so That's there's nice. going to be no pinkness to it that's nice yeah, it's all, it's pretty it's pretty cool and interesting too. Like that same fat where you're like, man, you know, you definitely want to kind of eat that first. You know, that fat can turn, but that's also what makes that bear meat so good and 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 allows you to cook it well enough to where it's safe to eat and and delicious. Absolutely. So, yeah. And, and yeah, <clears throat> one of the one of the other great ways to just eliminate the threat of trichinosis is to can your bear meat. Um, I'll take a quarter to a half of each bear, and I'll just can it up. And it is so good. It locks in all that fat as well. So, you know, um, after you've canned a, you know, a bunch of bear meat, you'll see this just thick layer of fat in the jar itself. Um, but as far as safety goes, you've cooked the trick out of it. You've retained all the moisture. Um, and you just get this nice 
these nice tender pieces of bear meat locked up in those cans. And then you could just use that for long periods of time versus if you've put your bear meat, most of it into a freezer, you really need to kind of like get to get to hammering on that bear meat and grinding and, and eating it up, you know, within a yeah. few months. Gotcha. Canning, canning is just seriously, it's like the answer. I, yeah. I need to, I need to get into that, Jim. That's something that I have not taken on, but likewise, what kind of recipes are you doing with that canned meat then? And then I guess as far as shelf life goes, how long is that extending it? Oh man. Yeah. You can it up and you're going to have a very, very long shelf life. I don't know exactly how long, but, um, you know, I'll pull canned bear meat out. That's, you know, a year and a half old and eat it up. It just tastes like it just went into the can. Wow. Um, there's probably, there's probably recommendations on that. I don't know what they are, (laughs) but I, it tends to not last that long. So, um, Yeah, I I would highly recommend getting into canning if you're getting into bear hunting because taking half of that up, uh, half of that bear meat and putting it up in cans uh, and you can get creative with the flavors that you add to it. But when you, you could just come home from a day of working at Vortex guys and just crack open a, you know, a a jar of canned bear meat and just mix it with, you know, a stir fry or, you know, a bunch of other veggies and, and just heat it up or just eat it as is, or just put a little sriracha in there or just sea salt or whatever. And it's just got a really good flavor to it. Uh, There's probably a million different recipes that you could, that you could add canned bear meat to and, uh, and use it. I mean, you could put it in shepherd's pie um, if you're building a a nice shepherd's pie later down the road. So uh, just a lot of different ways you can use it. You're not losing anything by canning up the bear meat. Okay. That's awesome. I wonder if you could make like a carnita style taco with it jim were you, were you talking are, about that the other day is that why that's in my head wait canned carnitas yeah i think yeah be cool i mean i don't can stuff but i think if i did i'd probably make a lot of carnitas a little, absolutely yeah tacos and burritos that's it's a great way to to utilize it it just it you can just take a fork and just press it down and you've got this just yeah perfect taco meat so now you said tacos and you also mentioned burritos i'm curious do you have a do you have a, <laughs> a preference between those two styles Mm, I like them both. I like them all. Ooh. If let's say fence, you just let's say center. you had to pick one between it your tacos last meal and burritos, tacos and burritos. Yeah, yeah. you got to pick one. Uh, only okay. One. I I feel like I'm gonna go with the burrito. Oh, um, <clears throat> because you yes. can just get this nice big heavy <laughs> dense all the veggies in there. Uh, yeah. I, I feel knew like you it. Can just add more to it. <laughs> you, 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 I knew he was a burrito. You knew you liked him for just, some reason. I could tell. I could tell. This is an ongoing debate for Jim and myself. Actually, Jim <laughs> asks everybody this question. Um, it's true. I can tell you this: if this conversation doesn't get you excited about bear hunting and bear meat, mm. I don't know what will. I don't, yeah, you gotta check your pulse, check your stomach. <sighs> any uh, any other? Uh, meals at home that are just your your go-to like you know so we talked about some awesome oh geez i almost tipped my coffee over that'd been tragic jim uh, we talked about some can t- style meals we talked about a, uh, an excellent mountain meal um morels and bears and bear fat uh what's another one that you like at home that people can be thinking about ryan yeah i'll just take a ham and smoke it as well um Ooh. put that in the in the traeger all day and just smoke the crud out of it uh, it's, you slice that up. That's hard to beat guys. It's really hard to beat. Like I said, bear meat is just good. It's just good. Every way you cook it. Um, just make sure you cook it. Just yeah. make sure you cook yeah. it. Um, are you yeah. brine? Are you brining that for a time period before you put it in the smoker then? Yeah. Okay. Yep. Giving a little brine to it for sure. Do you have uh would you say for somebody who hasn't tried bear meat, is it just most, most similar to, I mean, can you not compare it to any other kind of meat or would you compare it somewhat to like beef? I would, I would compare it to beef. Um, some people may think that's crazy, but you know, if you feed someone, you know, and probably shouldn't do this, probably kind of mean, uh, (laughs) if you don't want them to know that it's bear meat, uh, you take out some canned meat and you put it in front of them. They're just going to think it's, uh, it's beef. Wow. No doubt about it. They're not going to know anything. Cool. So sweet. Awesome. Well, Hopefully everybody who's listening right now is is hungry. I don't know. I don't know if I should say hopefully because I don't want to make y'all miserable. But um, gonna want to definitely think about uh, trying to get you some bear meat. I'm thinking after listening to this thing. Um, but this is still part of our little series we're doing here with Mr. Ryan Lampers, all about spring bear 
And we do have one more talking about how to actually, let's say you spotted one, you found one, you know where to go, and you know what you're going to make with it when you cook it, but how exactly are you going to do the job of dispatching it? So, <laughs> let's, uh, was that the right term? <laughs> I, th- I, I think that'll dispatching. work. Dispatching. Jim, uh, I think, uh, yeah, we've, uh, it sounds like there's a lot more bear hunters this year. I think we've just created a lot more bear hunters, and so, uh, stay out of my spots. <laughs> All right. With that said, um, we'll go to the next one. Thanks, Mark. (laughs) Just a little public service announcement there. (laughs) Bye, guys. (laughs) 